Okay, so um, today we are going to be working on, you know, this Lion King-esque cat portrait, right? So I know everyone did um, the dog portrait yesterday, which is great. Um, really like the work. I mean, obviously I just saw. Um, and so today it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to try to capture a little bit more subtle nuances for today, right? As you can see, there is a lot of subtlety, a lot of subtle shifts and transitions within um, the light of that cat, especially within like the light of the fur, um, maybe like the white of the fur, right? So we're going to try capturing that without painting pure white, okay? At least at the at least from the beginning towards the end, we're not going. We're going to be painting that without using pure 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 white. We actually never want to use pure white in any cases, actually. Um, but today I'm just kind of going to show you how I would go about approaching something like this. Okay. Um, so just a little uh, material introduction. So right here, I have my palette. Let's see if I can actually, uh, uh, yeah. So right here, I have my palette. I have um, Viridian Ultramarine Blue, Transparent Red Oxide, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Red, Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Light. And this is my um, Titanium White, Light Blue, Turquoise, Ivory Black. Uh, these are just kind of like dried out burnt umbers. Um, I'm not really going to use it, so it doesn't matter. And this is my Gamblin Solvent Free Gel. Okay. And for the paint brushes that I'm going to be using, um, the paint brushes that I'm going to be using is the Trakel Opal and Legion Flats. Okay. So they are the Opal, uh, they are the Opal and Legion Flats. I've been using them actually since Trakel sent me a few of them. And I really enjoy them. If you guys haven't used uh, Opal before, I really recommend you doing so. Sorry, just grabbing a little bit. I just realized I need to maybe squeeze a little bit more light yellow. Um, so the light yellow and the yellow medium is really, is really important. Um, and it's uh, a really good two colors to have. The reason why is because the yellow light is going to be more of a cooler yellow and the yellow medium is going to be more of a warmer yellow. So, you know, and that can kind of, uh, help in a lot of situations, right? So let's see, I'm going to grab my, grab my, oh, grab my, uh, can you go over the blues again down at the bottom? Oh, uh, yeah. So over here, I have my, uh, light blue or some brands, they call this King's blue. And here I have turquoise. Yeah. And over here I have a little bit of Portland warm gray. I think it's dry, so I might not even use it. Um, the blues are not necessary. They're just kind of like fun little colors that I like using. Uh, you don't need to use them. Um, you know, I just, I kind of like, I don't think we'll be needing to use a lot of it. Um, and I, I might use a lot, a little bit of the light blue, but that's mainly just due to convenience sake. You can mix a light blue kind of like this with, by mixing um, a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, a tiny bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of cadmium red, and a lot of white. So you'll be able to kind of mix a blue that's similar to this. Um, this is just for convenience sake. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be using, um, let's see, I'm going to be using, starting out with my number six opal long flat. And I'm going to, I might just use opals for today since those are the only paintbrushes I can yeah, I grabbed out, so like, I usually just grab out paintbrushes and whatever I use, whatever I grab out, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to be using my number four and my number six Opal Long Flats today. And that's it. Like, I don't use that many brushes um, because I'm lazy. I don't like cleaning brushes. And also, you really don't need to use too much brushes, especially if you can control the entire play of the color mixing process here. Okay. Okay, so let's... Let's get started. Um, so over here, I have the Trakel, um, what kind of, what, what, what can, what can is this called? What size is this? Um, but yeah, um, this is what they used for their, I believe their pet portrait competition before. If not, it looks a little different, maybe a little bit more square, but I really like the size. I really like, um, you know, the intricacy or like the really cool shape that the, you know, this is going to help give us a lot of, um, good, I guess, um, formations to play with in terms of composition. Um, so how I prepared this was literally, I just, they gave me, this is a pre-primed one. Um, 
And all I did was I just put a little bit of transparent, clear gesso on top. Just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, just to help everything flow a little better. But yeah, pretty much that's all I did for preparing surfaces. Okay. Right. So um, let's let's begin now. Okay. So the first thing that I actually want to do is I want to be taking a look at the reference and I want to squint down. I want to squint down and I want to take a look first and foremost before anything. I don't want to be thinking of like, oh, well, here's a cat. I'm going to paint a cat. I don't want to be thinking of it like that. And I think um, in some of the pieces I showed, I saw from you guys, you know, I think that's what you guys were thinking of at the beginning. It's like, oh, here's a cat, here's a dog, I'm gonna paint it like that, you know? Um, but we, before we even think about that, we want to kind of like go in to the core of what it is we're painting. And the core of what it is we're painting is, you know, we're painting rhythm, we're painting flow, painting movement, right? And we're ultimately the rhythm of the composition or the balanced and rhythm of the composition, right? So for instance, like I can take a look at the reference and I can say, okay, well, the, you know, the top of that cat right there from the ear going downwards, it's kind of creating like this kind of a, uh, this kind of motion, right? And then um, I can see that, okay, um, the line over here from the left ear going downwards, it creates like this kind of motion. So basically this is creating a motion like this. And then this point is balancing that out. So, okay, cool. So I can kind of, right now I'm going to just- I have a question. Uh-huh. Uh, I have just standard size panel, 11 by 13. Uh-huh. Do you think it's best to do horizontal or vertical? So that really depends on your, um, on what you kind of want to depict, right? So yeah. for this piece, it goes both ways. It just really depends on what sense of movement you see from this piece. You see what I mean? From this reference. Yeah. Like, what are you seeing? Is the, and is the flow moving at a horizontal pace or is the flow moving at a vertical pace for you? For, it can go both ways. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. For me, this is like a square, right? So really depends, right? Like I don't really like telling students how to like devise composition because composition is such a personal thing. Um, yeah. You know, for me to tell you, it's like a you know, like you know, I, I want I want to see what you guys are seeing. Like I, I don't want you guys to see. I don't. I want you guys to paint what I think I'm seeing, right? But anyways, so I'm gonna just go on and start covering up this area now. I'm gonna go in with a wash. So the wash I'm using is an ivory black, a little bit of cadmium yellow light and a little bit of my blue and a little bit of my green. Honestly, just anything that's not white. Um, and let's see, I'm actually gonna, it's a little too dark in my opinion. I'm gonna go in maybe with a little bit of transparent oxide, get some warms in there, a little bit of orange, a little bit of blues maybe. And I'm just gonna dip it in my gam cell right here. I'm not even mixing it. Okay. So as I'm doing this, you know, most people when they do this, it, they just literally just think of it like painting a house. They're just, they're just doing this mindlessly. Don't do that. Use this opportunity to kind of help scope out um, the possibilities of, you know, where everything can go. So for example, like I'm, I'm doing this right now. I'm like, okay, well, ooh, like, you know, maybe like the head can kind of go somewhere here, right? And like, you know, I'm, I'm literally just you just um gesture drawing right now while covering up and creating a base tone so i'm kind of killing two birds with one stone right here you know what i mean so i'm kind of getting my and also i'm warming up i'm warming up my hand i'm getting all this crazy jitters out so then you know when i actually paint i won't have all these erratic movements um you know i can have a little bit more control okay so right now after that i'm going to use my paper towel paper towel is really important you always want to have a paper towel in your hand if you don't have a paper towel in your hand throughout the entire time, you know, you, you want to have a paper towel in your hand. The paper towel that I'm using is Viva paper towel. It's really, really nice. Uh, it absorbs a lot of liquid, so that's why I like it. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go in here and I'm just going to start laying out perhaps kind of where maybe the head is going to be. Maybe somewhere here. All right, 
So right now, what it is I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in with my transparent oxide. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to start seeking out some of the, um, some of the lines that I'm seeing. So for example, like this, maybe the line that represents the ear. And then I see that this line kind of meets up right here with, um, it's meeting up with like, uh, maybe for example, like this is maybe where like that the bottom of the mouth can be. Maybe not. Over here. Where like the ear is. And I'm really just trying to kind of go in here with, um, not really trying to draw out anything. This is purely me using straight lines to kind of just kind of get a gauge and try to just kind of figure out exactly where the overall structure is going to be. So for example, like from this area right here, that can be like where that ear ends right there. And I noticed that, you know, if I put a straight line down here, boom, that could be kind of where that fur is. Okay. So of course, like you don't want to, I guess, um, make this too obvious, right? We don't want to lock too much things in. So I'm actually going to like clear some of this stuff out. We don't want to lock too much of this in, uh, because we, we, we don't want to, arrive at the answer too quickly, right? Because we don't know the answer. This is going to be malleable and inter interchangeable throughout the entire process. We don't want to be thinking of it like, oh, well, that's exactly where that bottom of the mouth is going to be, or that's exactly where that ear is going to be. We want to be thinking of it like that. This is just kind of placing a rough estimate on everything for right now, okay? And then uh, let's see. Maybe like the eye can kind of be somewhere there. Maybe the nose can... Kind of be somewhere there, right? Who knows? Okay. And then I really like the, the greens of the background here. So I might just kind of make an indication right here to let myself know that, oh, I may want to play around with that dark of the background a little later. Okay. So right now I'm just kind of like going in and I'm trying to capture the essence. I'm trying to capture the essence of what I'm seeing. So I'm not going to move on until, you know, I can get like this ghost, ghostly essence of the image across. Okay. And I think this is pretty good. So let's get started now. All right. So the first thing that I usually tell students to think about when they're going for colors, right, um, is um, these three simple steps. You guys can write this down or type this down or whatever. Um, I think it's pretty useful, at least in terms of color mixing. So the first step to color mixing or to getting a sound color mixture going on, right, is the first thing that you want to pay attention to is local colors, right? So whatever it is you're looking at, what is the local color of that area? And it doesn't have to be anything specific. It could be red, yellow, orange, doesn't matter. Like here, for example, like maybe this little area right here, that's like maybe an orange right there, right? but it's definitely not like a pure orange, okay? So that's when value comes in. How light and how dark is that orange, right? And then you can compare that to maybe something else around the area and ask yourself how light or how dark is the value of this orange, of this local color. And then after that, after you get the value, after you get the local colors, the third thing you wanna think about is, okay, what is, is it more red? Is it more yellow or is it more blue? And then just, According to that hypothesis, or according to the an analysis, add more red, add more yellow, or add more blue as needed to help you, I guess, push this color for the final step towards the right direction. Yeah. So it helps when you break the color mixing process down like this, uh, instead of like just going in there and just mixing and just hoping for the best, right? Um, you want to have some kind of sense of direction, right? And here's the thing, I was talking to my students about this too. Uh, you guys might want to write this down too if you want to. Um, but um, I was talking to my students about this yesterday and I, I want to tell you guys this now too. And this goes for either master studies. Actually, this, this is actually for master copies, but uh, it also applies to real references. So for master copies, you know, whenever we're trying to paint, um, a huge issue I see 
mostly everyone doing all the time is they go in and straight up start painting the thing that they see up front. So if there's like a highlight or there's like a slightly lighter or there's like a lot of like different shapes of values and colors on top of a master copy, they start immediately going in and starting to copy and paint all those tiny little strokes. And I can guarantee you that is not how the actual painter did it when they were painting their piece. You know what I mean? Um, there's a process. The first thing that you see within a piece, and in this case, uh, you know, first thing that you see is usually the last thing that goes on it. You see what I mean? So you kind of want to reverse engineer that mindset. You know, instead of painting the first thing you see, you know, like, like peel, peel it back. Take a look at what's underneath the first thing that you see. Take a look at what's underneath the second thing that you see. All the way until you see the base. And then we start out with the base. You see what I mean? So in this case, you know, I see, okay, there's a lot of light here. But obviously, you know, that's not going to be like what I'm going to start with. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to try to seek out where I see, you know, the overall local base. And I see, okay, the local overall local base may be somewhere here where it's a little bit more of a neutralized orange, right? So that's exactly what we're going to start with. So I'm going to start with my orange just to make it easy. And obviously, this is not the right orange, right? So we start with my orange. See that a um, little bit more orange. And then I'm going to go in with my titanium white to adjust the value. All right, cool. But now, right now, the chroma is a little too high. It's a little, a little bit too much. So I'm going to subdue it. I want to subdue it, maybe add a little bit of red in here, and then to get it shifting to that reddish orange side. I still want to subdue it though. So I'm going to go in with my light blue here. Um, so basically, Alexa, quiet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going with my Elizabeth and Crimson. Okay. So I'm like, okay, actually, I kind of like this value. Kind of like where this is going. So I'm going to dip a little bit of my brush in my um, solvent free gel just to kind of help the paint get it moving. And a technique I like using, this is a technique hopefully you guys can adopt too, is I like calling what I like calling a shoveling the paint. So it's like after I mix the paint, I use this side and I shovel thick paints on like so, right? Like so. That way I'll be able to get like really nice um, brush strokes or really nice thick brush strokes from the very beginning. Well, not too thick, but you know, thick enough to kind of create like a nice cover. So right now I'm actually just kind of applying a color note, notes of color throughout. And I'm, this is going to be my local color for right now for at least the orange, right? So I notice here that it's a little bit more of a red. I'm going to mix a little bit of red into that local color. I'm going to apply it like so over here. Let's see. And right now I'm going to say, okay, well, over here it's a little bit of a dark. Maybe using a little bit of viridian to cool it down a little bit. Maybe a little bit of white to cool it down a little. Or a little bit of light blue to cool it down a little bit. And right now, like, I'm only trying to just kind of cover up everything with, I guess, um, notes of colors, right? So right now over here, I see, okay, well, what is, so for example, this is a really good example of base layers. So everyone try to look at the ear area right there, right? Do you, what do you think goes first? Do you think the light goes first, the white of the fur, or do you think, what do you think goes first? Obviously, it's going to be the warm of, you know, that ear, right? Or the dark of that ear, right? So that's basically kind of a sense on how to scope out the foundational, you know, bottom base layer. So we're going to start out with that first. That's a little red right here. I guess I'll just use this red. That should be fine. Over here, I'm going to go a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit of blue with a little bit of crimson, mixing in with the mixture I just had. They're like a nice dark right there. Okay. And as you guys can see, like right now, I'm not trying to, I, I guess, uh, make it detailed, make it tight. Everything is very loose. And that's the way that it should be. 
we're still trying to just capture the overall essence of the painting. Keep that in mind. So light blue, mixing in with this value right here. A little bit of light yellow. Okay. Then using this to kind of apply the values over here a little bit. Okay. Over here, I noticed that, okay, there's going to be a little bit of a transparent oxide. Bit of a blue right here with that transparent oxide. Maybe add a little bit of yellow in here to kind of push it to the, towards the yellow. And that will be kind of like the value of that here right there. Any, does anyone have any questions so far on what I'm doing? No? Nope? Okay, good. So before anything, um, I kind of want to introduce a bit of the darker values here. So maybe for instance, Viridian, ultramarine blue, a little bit of ivory black, and some yellow right there. Just to introduce some nice greens. Okay. And introducing the greens here is just so I can kind of get a gauge on, you know, I want to get the back, the at least a little color note of the background there. So then I'll be able to compare that later on when I start mixing in some of the lighter values over here. Make sense? You never want to neglect any areas. You always want to have at least some kind of color note or color key happening within you know, all aspects of the painting. That way you'll be able to create comparisons wherever you're going. Okay. All right, so right now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in. I'm just gonna apply this little area right there. Right. Okay, so let's see. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go in and cover a little bit more up. So still just kind of like a color blob right now. It's not really anything yet. Okay. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in for, um, actually I'm gonna go in for some of the uh, lighter values, some of the cooler lighter values. So here's the thing about painting white fur, right? We want to say, we want to look and establish, okay, what do we want the final layering to be? So what do we want the final highlights to be? Do, you want, do we want to make it a cool? Do we want to make it a warm? Do we want to make it like a yellow light, red light, blue light, right? Because we're not going to make it a pure white, you know? Maybe we're definitely not going to make it a pure white. We're going to have some kind of color variations to it. Um, so whatever variations you have, whether it be warm and cool, you know, you want to try to get to that, you want to get to that um, initial value after three to four layers, right? So warm, cool, warm, cool. If it's going to be a cool, it's more like cool, warm, cool, warm. If it's going to be a warm, right? So I just stated out like it's probably going to be like, a, I think it's going to be more of a warm. So I'm going to start out with the cool, right? And I can start layering it on top like so. So over here, I'm actually going to start with a neutral. Hey, Kai, uh -huh. the, sun, the sun has moved a bit, so this, there's sun um, on your panel right now. Oh, wait, there? Yeah, if, when you move your head. Oh, oh. Yeah, just I? watch out for it. Oh, okay, okay. Right okay. Now. All right, I'll try to try to cover it. If it gets too bad, I'm going to go cover it up somewhere. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. All right, so right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint in a neutral value, like so. Neutral cool. All right. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in. And just kind of getting in some of like the nice cool values 
of the lights. Okay. So, so far, like I said, we still don't want to focus too much on details. So there's no details yet. Maybe you gotta get a little bit of a Elizabeth Crimson plus Ultramarine Blue combo right here with a bit of a white and light blue combo mixture. A little bit of yellow mixture right here. Light yellow mixture. Create like this nice dark like so. And the whole reason why right now the blob, like it still kind of looks a little like a colored blob is because I actually haven't put any landmark points yet. Landmark points are basically points are kind of like the nose, the mouth, the eye. You know, usually put, people put those first. I try to leave those until a little later on. Um, because if I put those first, I'm going to rely on them too much. So I kind of want to, I guess, get the overall bottom. Like if you take away the eye, the nose, the mouth, what do you get? Hold on, I'm going to actually cover the light. This is going to be Okay. So, people who are watching, right back to this. Um, let's see. Alright, so um, well, I'm actually going to go back into my uh, number six Opal Long Flat. This one. Okay, so basically right now, as you can see, I'm just kind of going about and kind of getting just, just getting the overall surface in, right? Uh, and maybe I'm going to start by getting a little bit of that, a little bit of that um, eye color in there. Maybe I'm going to just start capturing it just a little bit. But nothing too, you know, nothing too out there. Just a little note of color. Kind of establish what that eye is. So I'm really just trying to discipline myself with, I guess, establishing the overall bottom lower base. I usually actually am not this patient. I usually just go straight in after a little bit. But I'm really, for the sake of demonstration, I'm really trying to discipline myself in not moving on too fast. I'm gonna get a little bit of reds right there. And as you guys can see, the more I start building up, the more, you know, you'll start be able to kind of see the essence of like the subject right there, right? So that's the thing, you know, once you're able to kind of get a clear bearing on the essence, that is the moment when you can actually get started with um, the actual, um, landmark or anchor points of the painting. So like eyes, nose, ears, whatever, right? Um, but until then, you ultimately kind of want to, I guess, try your best to work in terms of midtones. Get some oranges here, a little bit of yellows, a little bit of whites. A little bit of blues right here. And ultimately, like the whole goal of me doing this as well is I'm just trying to get paint on the surface right now. Like that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get paint on there. Because if you don't even have paint on there, like it's going to be very hard to work with. So that's something you guys want to watch out for. You don't want to get too fixated on, you know, an area at the very beginning. Just get paint on there and then, you know, work it out later. You know what I mean? Like, don't worry about it that much at the beginning. All right. Let's see. So right now I'm going to go in maybe with a little bit of a dark viridian with my transparent oxide. That dark I'm aiming for is actually that dark over here. Okay. 
Give you some light blues right there. Some nice neutrals. And I'm trying to keep the value of this and this pretty separate, but even then, you guys can slowly start seeing the separation. Yeah, and the whole reason why that is is because of the warm and cool kind of separation going on. So if you keep them separate from the very beginning, they will stay separate throughout the painting process. If you're careful, like, you know, you always want to be diligent and careful about doing these kind of things. All right, so right now, I'm just kind of going in, getting in a little bit more of the color piece in. You know, by this time, uh, I'm slowly just trying to just build up, just kind of build up the structure now by kind of applying more and more color notes to everything, right? Okay. All right, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get started with keying in some of the landmarks. So I'm going to get my ultramarine blue, a little um, transparent oxide. I, I don't really care what color it is. I'm just trying to get a dark for right now. And after that, maybe a little red to neutralize it. And I'm going to have that mix into a little bit of this mid-tone right there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go in and slowly start applying this landscape or this tra uh, landmark right there. Okay. A little bit of uh, blues and crimson. A little bit of dark right there. I did more Elizabeth and Crimson plus a little bit more Ultramarine Blue. Just trying to get the overall essence, that dark. Okay. Any questions so far? No? No questions? Guys, feel free to ask, uh, to ask any questions. Like, I'm not, uh, usually, like, I prefer if students, you know, you know, feel free to speak up. Like, it, it's fine. Cause, uh, yeah. Or else it's just gonna be me talking. <laughs> like, don't be shy. Don't be shy. It's, uh, totally fine to ask questions. I, I usually like talking when I'm teaching. But, yeah. So don't, don't worry about bothering or interrupting me. Like, you definitely not gonna be a bother. I've never painted like this, so I'm kind of like in shock. Uh huh. Oh, really? Yeah, Kai is a very different. Well, the thing is, he's able to do really academic drawing and painting style, but also he has this really free spirit style. <laughs> which is really free deep. spirit, like a travel, wandering traveler. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, who who's talking just now? By the way, sorry, I just want to get to know everyone's names. Uh, Ruth. Ruth. Oh, and hi. I went. I went to the Maryland Institute years ago. You and, did. You know, it was so classical back then. I don't know. It was. Know. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. It's totally not anymore. Yeah, that's what I kind of am gathering. Oh, oh, Micah alumni. That's awesome. My fellow alumni. Look at that. What year did you go? Um, I graduated in. 76. Did you know who Daniel Graves was? What's the name? Daniel Graves. I think he graduated around that time too. No. No? I you know was the... there at the same time as, um, who was the guy, um, with the, the big crazy, um, statues. Who, Jeff Koons? Yeah. Oh my god, you were there during that time? <laughs> oh yeah, they worship Jeff Koons over there. Um, Daniel Graves is the founder of the Florence Academy of Art. He went to MICA. No one talks about him there. <laughs> All right. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in for my slightly lighter value right here. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. And 
as you can see, as we further progress through the paint, we're going to start stacking more values on top of each other. And it's going to be thicker and thicker. It's going to get thicker and thicker as we start painting.